Hi, my name's Alessia Russo and today I'm being given an honorary doctorate from Canterbury Christchurch University. I went to university out there for three years. Phil Neville, the manager at the time, I looked at my phone and I had a missed call from him and I was like, hmm, that's weird. So I left the class to go out and, and ring him back and then he told me that I was going to the She Believes Cup. But originally it was at a, as a training player and even then I was just so excited to be joining up with the squad and then someone got injured so I went in as a full squad member and then while I was at that tournament he gave me my debut as well so don't think I went back to class. <laughs> I have a group chat with all my family so I would have put it in there and then I can't remember what they said or what I said but they were buzzing and then obviously book flights as soon as they knew where the games were and my dad um, has never like missed an England game. Both of them as well, mum travels, they come all over the world and, and follow the journey, which is nice. Even now, sometimes when I go into camp, I still get a bit nervous, but just because it's something that you love and you want to do so much. So I think it, it's nice to have them kind of nerves. But when you get on the pitch, that's just what you're made to do. That's what you love doing. So yeah, it, it was hard at first to adjust, but when I got there, I was just so excited to be playing, training with them even, see what their stat, like the standards was like. And obviously it's sky high and still is at the moment. Like when you go into camp, the level is just so high. And I'm still quite young, so to see the likes, even playing with Ellen, who's got the most incredible CV as a striker for England, it was so cool to learn off of her and, and just understand what's gotten to the top. We've had an amazing experience so far and we will for the rest of our two years here, but um, when we've spoken to, previous, uh, to, to colleagues and players who've been at other universities, their experiences haven't been so great. So what I'd say to a, a younger me or a, someone in the same position as I was three years ago, I'd say explore every single option. What may be uh, suitable for me is not suitable for someone else. And what may be suitable for them is not suitable for their friend who's also looking to come out to America. Me and Lotta have like a joke almost. We, we say, how's your day? And said, good days, only good days because with them and here there is only good days. I moved out to America when I was just turned 18 and just had to grow up and figure things out for myself and then obviously had the best time out there at school and playing football and made some of my best friends for life through the university and there was some struggles that I faced. Didn't know how to set up a bank account, didn't know how to set up a phone contract out there because it was all just so complicated. But I went out there with Lotta with a boy who plays for Arsenal and we both went out there together and, and and she helped me a lot. She was like my big sister, I always tell her that. To have a familiar face around just, yeah, made it special and then we created so many great memories together. I would love to go back and visit as much as I can and yeah, I can only look back at it with, with really good memories. And being lionesses together, how nice has that been? It's so nice being lionesses together. I always want to see Lotta succeed. She's one of my closest friends and yeah, when you go through something like university and the other side of the world with someone, it's the bond unbreakable. Um, I think that the journey that we've been on together, I've known her since we were about 13 as well, so we've seen each other at some incredible highs but also some lows too, but that's what makes the friendship so special. Lotta and I went on a, a journey together, um, crossed the sea and went to America. We both went to the University of North Carolina as naive 17 year old girls and I think that it was an amazing journey and it was so nice to do it with such a familiar face. Obviously Lotta and I played together through the youth age groups. It was so nice to, to experience such a different culture of life and football with her and some things I wouldn't have been able to have done without Lotta, like setting up an American bank account and setting up an American phone number and all that jazz Lotta's very good at. She, she was like my older sister or she maybe say my mum. Lotta, uh, I've known Lotta since I was about 13 and we went to uni together, so yeah. Assuming the build up to this move, you've had a chance to chat to a few of your future teammates. Who have you been chatting to, to to find out a little bit more? Been chatting to a few, but in particular Lotta and Beth and Leah, the England girls. But Lotta and I went to uni together, so we got a really good relationship, which is nice. So yeah, she was a shoulder to lean on when I was out in college. And when you need advice, you, you kind of go to those kinds of people that you know have got your back and vice versa. So I can't wait to be playing with all of them. You said that you went to uni with that person that's been like showing you around the bits. Yeah, she has for sure. The kit man said when we first came that we'd been attached at the hip, but we oh. had, it's nice to have like a familiar face yeah. when you join a new team. Is there anyone um, else that like, was familiar or? But I've really got on with um, Palova. 
Oh, really? I actually call her Pavlova. Why the number 23? I'm a big Jordan fan. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm a Michael Jordan fan. So he went to the uni that Lotta and I went to in America. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Did you wear number 23 in America when you was over there? No, Lotta beat me to it. <laughs> oh, that's probably why you're good friends now, man. I know. Anyway, the biggest step yeah. was obviously going over to America. Yeah. Um, but you obviously knew you wanted to do that even before going to Brighton and stuff. But, like... What was the what was the thought process behind that? Was was it just like English unis weren't attractive or? Um, I think well I knew in sixth form that I didn't want to go to an well I hadn't studied enough through school to go to an English <laughs> yeah. university because I've missed so much of school. Right. Um, so I took the SAT and <clears throat> got a, like a tutor for it and did well in it. So it got me into UNC, which in America is like a, an amazing school. And obviously I got offered a scholarship as well. So it kind of was like an opportunity I couldn't turn down. Yeah. And then I went out there on a visit um, a few months before I like was going to start and just fell in love with it. The campus is amazing. The whole like lifestyle of college of a college athlete is just like it was so good. I couldn't yeah. couldn't say no. So then got it all agreed and, and went out the following summer. How much prep for something like that do you have to do for like flying out there? Yeah. Seeing what it's like day to day because I was looking at it. Yeah. And then it got to the point where I was just like, oh, it's it is a lot of yeah. time and hassle, I think. <laughs> It luckily worked out quite well because I'd played in a tournament in December where there was a lot of college scouts. Right. Um, and then they kind of made the process a lot easier. And my older brother, Luca, had done the same thing. Yeah, so he yeah, knew yeah. what to do, like sorting the visa, sorting everything out there was, it, it's hard work. But once it's all done, you're, you're sorted for like three, three or four years. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when, when I got out there, it was, everything was sorted for you. Yeah. So. It was nice, made, made my life a bit easier. How did you pick the NCU though? I was talking to three schools. One was um, North Carolina, one was Virginia, and one was Florida State. The coach is like, he's been there for so many years and he's like renowned to have made like loads of players. He, right. Tobin Heath went there, Crystal Dunn, like loads of top US players. And I thought if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me as a, a young English kid. So um, yeah, I went out there. I went with Lotta, um, a girl I played with over here. She was at Arsenal, and uh, yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah. Had the best time. Speaking of a few of the athletes there as well, obviously Michael Jordan went there. Yeah. You? So what was it like being in an environment that, I suppose, like breeds winners basically? Yeah. Did 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 it feel like that? Yeah, and in all the sports, um, every year the teams were competing for like national championships, which is like the highest right. award you can win. And that's actually why I wear 23 now for United. It's I was going to ask. Yeah, it's yeah, for yeah. Jordan. Nice. But yeah, it's like a culture out there where you're at UNC. It's almost like being at kind of like Manchester United. You're expected to win in, in the competitions mm. that you're in. And mm. you have you recruit a lot of players because it's a big school and they've got a history of doing well. So it's just like standard out there. Flying out there and being, you know, was it a 10-hour flight maybe or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Away from family, I suppose, for like the first time really in your life. Yeah. Um, how, how did you settle in all right? Or was it a bit like shaky? first because it's yeah. probably a side of Russo people don't yeah, see yeah, it is. <laughs> being a bit shaky <laughs> yeah it was really shaky <laughs> really? to begin with yeah I was really homesick um even when I was younger and I used to go on England camps I used to like get really worked up before I'd go away because really? I, I just loved being at home yeah yeah but yeah I it was tough the first few weeks thought what am I doing why have I just moved to the other <laughs> side of the country <laughs> questioning it all but um the girls were like great made friends like really quickly so that helped and it's just Americans just want to help you like everyone wants to go out of their way to look after you so uh, that helped and then yeah as soon as the football started coming as well you settled in and I, yeah, I loved yeah. it ever since makes you feel at home just like yeah, playing it does. something that you've getting done involved in it yeah American culture is very different to here it's very different what were some things that you loved about it and I'll move on to hate it after because there must be <laughs> I loved well how friendly everyone was yeah, like, yeah 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 especially where I was it was like southern culture so everyone welcomes you in like mm -hmm. invites you over for dinner like it was a nice environment to be in um I loved the weather it yes. was so hot what, what was it like 30s 40s? yeah when I arrived in August we got off the plane and it was like you know when you're on holiday and <laughs> yeah, it hits yeah, you yeah. that's what it was like <laughs> yeah it, sometimes it was a little bit too hot but the weather was lovely the campus was unreal yeah the, the culture was really nice I enjoyed that part did you like the food no, I hate the food. Yeah, I like that, when sucks, you were going to ask me what I didn't like, I was going to say the food. Yeah. Especially in, in the South, it's like they have a lot of Southern dishes, which is like fried chicken, like biscuits and gravy. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's horrible. 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 
and the portion sizes are huge. Oh, it's huge. Isn't it? I put on a lot of weight my first <laughs> semester. Then I came back and thought I needed to sort myself yeah. out. But um, yeah, the portion sizes were huge. I didn't love the food, but you found places that that you liked when you were there a bit longer. Was there any like? What food caught you out, like guilty pleasures wise? Um, that made you pack on the pounds. I liked, what did I like? I liked Chipotle. Oh yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like their breakfasts, like like loads of maple syrup and bacon. It's and all too that. much, isn't it? Nah, yeah. yeah, it's too much. <laughs> too much. I've just um, come back from Austin, so obviously oh, nice. in the south as well. Yeah. Lovely, like exactly what you're saying, everyone's so friendly. Yeah. But you just like you want to come home and just have like a normal looking vegetable yeah, you and do. just like eat you, one. Yeah, it's and horrible. everything is covered in cheese over there. Yeah, and it's the yeah. cheese. Is it's the like orange <laughs> cheese, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Yeah. So it's come out of a can. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's not nice. Food, yeah, food, not a good thing. America's no. got to fix up on that. Yeah, they got to sort it out. So congratulations on receiving your award today. Being back here in your home county, how does it feel to have this honour, become a doctor here today? Yeah, it's really special. Um, I try and get back down as much as I can um, to these parts that were a big part in the journey. Um, so to be given such a prestigious uh, award today, it's going to be really, really special and I'm uh, really excited. And so you're in the ceremony today with our sports students and graduates. What's your advice to them as they step into the sporting industry? My message is just to never miss an opportunity. Um, for me, growing up as a female footballer, it's not always been easy. Um, but today's world's changing and, and I try and leave an impact in however um, much possible I can and just, yeah, try and have a positive effect on the young boys and girls that want to go out and be professional footballers one day. And as an advocate for girls and women in sport, how important is it that the country really um, continues on the success that the Lionesses have had? Yeah, massive. I think hopefully this is just the beginning. Um, we hope to go out and achieve much more as players, um, hopefully win some more trophies. But I think that it was a bit of a watershed moment for people getting involved in, in women's football and we're finally getting the credit that, that it deserves. Um, but long may it continue now and, and we'll always keep pushing for more. And how did it feel to get that European Championship? It's hard to put into words, really. Um, I think I experienced every emotion that day. Uh, I was crying, I was laughing. Um, but yeah, it was really, really special um, and something that you kind of dream about when you're a little kid, but almost don't think will ever happen. Um, so when it does, I was kind of just speechless, taking it all in and, and making sure that, that the memories will last a lifetime. What's your goal for the future? <laughs> I want to go on and win lots more trophies. Um, obviously, we've got a World Cup this summer, which is huge to, to get in the squad and then go and compete for that. And yeah, can continue winning games, winning titles, things like that. By virtue of the authority committed to me, I welcome you as an honorary doctor of Canterbury Christchurch University. Good afternoon, everyone. Firstly, thank you, Paul, for quite the introduction. A huge congratulations to everybody here today on your remarkable achievements. I'm honored to be here to celebrate you. It is a time in your life that you should be immensely proud of, one that not everyone can say they have accomplished. Canterbury is a place I used to visit often for various different sporting events as a local girl. It is a place I hold close to my heart and even more so now after their extreme generosity to honour me with this special award. Being a female in sport has not always been easy. We are faced with barriers every day to overcome in order to reach the top of our game. I came from a very sporty family and one that put my dream first in order to become a professional footballer. I think they believed in me much more before I believed in myself, and that is something I'm forever grateful for. I grew up playing ever since I can remember. My earliest memories were playing with my dad and brothers as a keen five-year-old, wanting to be involved in everything that they did. I used to go down to the local boys team and try and get involved, and eventually they let me join them. Whether they actually wanted to or they just felt sorry for me is another story. I found myself on a team full of boys and would have to prove my worth in order to be respected by the people that always thought that football was a boys game. Although that should never be the case, it was what we were faced with, and I hope that this past summer, almost 20 years later, we have changed that narrative. The European Championship was a tournament like no other. A home Euros in a time all eyes were beginning to see what we could do on the pitch. A time women's football was finally getting the exposure it deserved. It seemed like it was football romance for us to go on and bring that trophy home. The feeling I got when the final whistle went is something I'll never be able to describe. 
You dream about it as a little girl, but often never think it could actually happen. That day was everything I dreamt of and more. Now we just have to go and win the World Cup next. I first played with England when I was 13 and still get the same fire in my stomach every time I'm given the privilege to wear the three lines on my chest. Representing your country is the biggest honour of them all, and to do it at a Euros in England made it that extra bit special. The biggest lesson I've learnt throughout my journey is to never miss an opportunity. Football, unlike most careers, are very short and you don't have long to impact. I've often struggled with self-belief, but as I've gotten a bit older, I've realised that believing in yourself is the opinion that matters most. You have to trust in yourself and the work that you're doing to match it. There are many highs and lows throughout the journey. In fact, in football, you'll find that there are actually more lows than highs, whether it be injuries, selection, playing time, losing, etc. However, I believe that you make of your career what you will, and you're always in charge of your own destiny. This is why I try and never leave any page unturned. It is the same in any realm of life. If you give everything, you'll reap the rewards one day. And although you may not see it straight away, always trust it will come. Although I am still young and still finding my feet within my career, I want to encourage you all to leave a legacy in whichever career you may choose. In football, we say leave the shirt better than you once found it. I wear number 23 for Manchester United, and wore it during the Euros. It is a number that's special to me as one of my sporting idols, Michael Jordan, wore it throughout his profound career. One of my favourite quotes from him is as follows. You must expect great things of yourself before you can do them. I think this epitomises how I feel about success. It always starts with you. You must have enough courage to always back yourself, even if the odds are against you. Trust your path and match it with hard work and commitment, and even if the odds are against you. Trust your path and match it with the hard work and commitment so that you can never look back with any regrets. As you embark on your next chapters, leave it in a better position than you found it. Finally, I just wanted to say a few thank yous. Thank you to Canterbury University and everyone involved in today and throughout to make this event so special and helping change the lives of so many young people. Thank you to Paul um, for nominating me for this prestigious award as it means so much. And finally, to my family who are here today as without them I wouldn't have achieved half the things I've done today. I would also like to say again a huge congratulations to everyone here today. You should be so proud. The late nights in the library, the stresses of deadlines, the last minute assignments are no fun whatsoever but we've all been there. However you've done it now and you all deserve so much credit. You're set up with the tools to go on and achieve something special so never take that for granted. Hope you all have a lovely day and celebrate the successes you have achieved in this moment but never stop pushing for more. Thank you all.